Our children here at St. Andrews participate in godly play, which is not a Sunday school curriculum, really. It is a liturgy. It is not a simple series of lessons taught to children week by week. Like us here in the sanctuary, the children are invited into an encounter with the Word, that is, an encounter with Jesus, an encounter with God. To do this, the children need to be ready. And so the storyteller helps them get ready. There is a way for them to sit quietly in a circle and pay close attention to the story that is being told. Because children are human beings, being ready can sometimes be a challenge. A friend of mine in Seattle, a priest and also a godly play storyteller, likes to say that when the children are not ready here in church, causing commotion, making noise, acting out, being restless, adults get irritated, not because the children are misbehaving, but because the adults, all the rest of us, are not allowed to misbehave, even though we want to just as much as the children do. It's not fair. Think about it and you'll see this is probably true. Sometimes church is boring, or we are singing or praying in a way I don't like, or I forgot breakfast, or I need to use the restroom, or I'm just not ready on a particular Sunday, so I want to fidget, but I can't, or at least I think I can't. I certainly feel pressure not to bust out crying, or get up and explore the room, or do all the other things that children have license to do. Adults are supposed to be ready, but are we? There are so many things for which we must be ready, and are we ever really ready for them? Are you ready for your kids to grow up, to learn to drive, to go off to college, to date or get married, to tell you who they really are, to have children of their own? Are you ready to listen when the doctor says, I'm sorry, there's something I have to tell you? Are you ready to say goodbye to an aging parent or cope with a difficult coworker or endure heavy traffic or turn another year or another decade older? Are you getting ready to face the social and political changes that are happening these days? And if you are getting ready, what does getting ready look like? Sometimes in godly play, if the children are having trouble getting ready, the storyteller can set aside the planned story and invite them to make the whole session that day about getting ready. And in Advent, which begins today, the storyteller tells the children that the whole point of Advent is that we need all this time to get ready for the mystery of Christmas. So today, let's talk about what we need to do and not do to get ready. But first, let's talk about what during Advent we are getting ready for. This may sound like a downer, but we are not getting ready to welcome the baby Jesus or celebrate the birthday of Jesus. Or if we are, these are complicated concepts and they need to be interpreted. We know that the actual baby Jesus was born two millennia ago. We don't really know what time of year he was born. We don't even know whether he was really born in Bethlehem. If we search for the historical baby Jesus, we may lose track of Jesus Christ himself. We may miss the whole point of who or what we are getting ready for. There is a graduate of Virginia Theological Seminary who can help us with this. <laughs> His name was Phillips Brooks, and he was born in 1835. He studied at VTS in the late 1950s, 1850s. There is a marble bust of him standing in the entryway of our library. I can't verify this story beyond a doubt, but I have been told that one Christmas he was on the VTS campus and he looked down the hill and he saw the town of Alexandria shining below, all the old town gas lamps glittering on a crisp, wintry night. Inspired by this view, Brooks wrote a poem called 
O Little Town of Bethlehem, which of course is one of our beloved Christmas carols. Another version of this story has Phillips Brooks on a pilgrimage to the actual town of Bethlehem, looking down on the city itself. But I like the Alexandria version. Anyway, here is a part of what Phillips Brooks writes about the baby Jesus and what we are trying to get ready to do in this time of year. Here's what he writes. How silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given. So God imparts to human hearts the blessings of his heaven. No ear may hear his coming, but in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive him still, the dear Christ enters in. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels the great glad tidings tell. O come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. That's a lot of theology for a CVS soundtrack. <laughs> so, we are not getting ready for the birth of a baby or planning a toddler's birthday party. We are getting ready for, in no particular order, someone to enter this world of sin, someone who is dear to us, that's kind of sweet, dear to us, and who responds to meek souls, someone who descends and is born in us today, someone who casts out our sin, someone who will abide with us. How can we get ready for this someone? St. Paul gives us some pointers. He uses, in our English translation of his letter, some big churchy-sounding words. We should avoid reveling and drunkenness and debauchery and sexual licentiousness. Okay, that sounds grouchy, but reasonable. But we should also set to one side our love of quarreling and jealousy. That might be harder. And then Jesus himself piles on. The Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour, he says, forebodingly. We know that the first people who heard his words expected without question that the last things, the day of judgment, would come to pass in their lifetimes. We know, too, of course, that they were mistaken about that. Yet there is a sense of urgency here that we should listen to. Getting ready for the holy child of Bethlehem to be born in us today is important and should rightly startle us. And we know in our bones that the biggest, most challenging things that happen to us, the things for which we have to work hardest to get ready for, they happen all of a sudden, out of nowhere. For Jesus and his followers all those years ago, the challenging event for which they needed to get ready was the destruction of Jerusalem in the year 70. This event shattered the social and political landscape not only for the first Christians, but for the whole Jewish people and really everyone in that region. Only two strains of Judaism survived that catastrophe and are still with us today, rabbinic Judaism and Christianity. But this is more than just an interesting history lesson. This is how we also feel time and again, startled, surprised, shocked, even shattered, Life comes at us, and there are so many things beyond our control. This morning, we hear this truth acknowledged and proclaimed. We must get ready for things that we can't predict, upsetting things, disruptive things, and we must get ready for God to enter into all this, to come and abide with us, to cast out our sin, to be born in us today. And this is good news. We must get ready for God to enter into our lives, much like we might prepare our homes for a special guest. We clean up, put things in order, throw out junk and clutter, dust the furniture, do the laundry, wash the dishes, prepare the meal, set the table, put on music, take a breath, and wait for the knock at the door. 
But what does getting ready for God's arrival look like, really, in our spiritual community here? It may look something like this. To prepare for God to be born in us today, we mend relationships that are broken, if we can. We deepen our capacity for prayer, even if that simply means getting better at sitting quietly. We notice and respond to the needs of our neighbor, whoever she might be. We notice who we tend not to notice, the neglected person, the lonely person in our lives. We gather here at this table of thanksgiving to be strengthened for our daily life and work. Those are a few things we can do to get ready. For just as we can't predict when bad things will happen, neither can we always know when God will disrupt our lives in a good way, even if it's not always easy, and cast out our sins of ignorance our sins of omission, our sins of disregard for and mistreatment of one another. Are you ready 